Hi everyone, Leo here from Sidecart. In today's video, we're diving into the exciting world of our new hard disk drive emulation feature, Gen Drive. But before we get into that, let's quickly go over the various devices that Sidecart can emulate on your Atari ST computer. As you probably already know, the Sidecart is fundamentally a ROM cartridge emulator. It emulates any type of ROM connected to the cartridge support expansion of your Atari ST. Following the ROM emulator, we introduce a floppy drive emulator, which functions just like a physical floppy drive. Then came the real-time clock emulator, syncing with an NTP server to keep accurate time and date. And now we have reached our latest addition, the hard disk emulator, or Gen Drive, which I will explain in more detail shortly. The great news about sidecard emulators is that they allow you to consolidate multiple devices into a single unit. With just a Raspberry Pi Pico W and a microSD card, you can replace individual floppy drives, real-time clock chips, and disk drives. This integration simplifies your setup, making it cleaner and more efficient. As usual, to access the features of the sidecard, you will need to enter the configurator mode by pressing the Select button. But before we dive into the hard disk emulator features, I want to highlight a new addition, dark mode in the configurator menu. To enable dark mode, simply navigate to the configurator menu and set the configurator dark parameter to true. Now, the next time we enter the configurator menu, it will display all content in dark mode. Let's reboot the system and see what happens. Awesome! Now your eyes won't suffer from the harsh white background anymore and your old CRT monitors will also be relieved from the glaring white screen. As you can see, there is a new emulate hard disk entry in the menu. Press 4 to enter the emulation configuration screen. By default, the hard disk emulator will search for a folder named HD in the root directory of your microSD card. If you haven't created this folder yet, Simply connect your microSD card to your PC, Mac or Linux computer and create it. In my setup, I'm using a different folder than HD. To change the folder, you need to adjust the settings in the configuration menu from the main screen. So let's head back to the main menu and press the configuration key. Search for the Gen Drive folders parameter and enter the name of your existing folder. Remember to include the slash as a prefix. If you enter a folder that Sidecart can find in the root directory, it will be displayed at the bottom right side of the screen. Now you're ready to use your hard disk emulator or gen drive, so press key 4 again. In version 0016 of the firmware, the hard disk emulator is marked as experimental, so please ensure you backup your data before using it. We can configure several parameters for the gen drive. First is the drive letter. You can choose which drive letter the gen drive will appear as in the gem of your Atari ST. It's important to select a letter that isn't already used by other storage units, particularly other hard disk drives. The next parameter is the temporary memory used. You can choose between the gem DOS disk buffer parameter and memory in the heap space. Change this parameter only if you encounter issues with specific programs. Next, the real time clock. If the RTC parameter is enabled, the sidecard will attempt to obtain a valid date and time. The last parameter is the timeout in seconds before the sidecard gen drive firmware stops trying to get a valid date and time from a remote NTP server. To start the emulator, simply press the S key. After a power cycle on your ST computer, the Gen Drive firmware will attempt to fetch a valid date and time from a remote NTP server. If it fails to do so, or if the network is in configure, it will either time out or bypass the date and time setup. And now we have successfully booted into the C Gen Drive unit. The Gen Drive recognizes the auto folder and other files loaded at boot time. Next, we're going to open the Sysinfo application and you will see that we are running on an Atari ST computer with 4 megs of RAM and DOS 1.62. Also, you can see that the date and time are properly set up.
the gen drive unit can interact with other units in your system, such as floppy drives and other hard disk drives. For this video, I'm going to open a GFA basic file located in the floppy drive A of the system. Not in the C folder. Let's go to A. And we are. Et voilà. Awesome. Importantly, the Gen Drive firmware doesn't consume any RAM memory on your Atari ST computer because it uses only ROM for the program and Gen DOS buffers for temporary information. This makes the Gen Drive an ideal choice for Atari ST computers with just one meg of RAM or even half a meg of memory. Another significant advantage of the Gen Drive over other hard disk drivers is its compatibility with TOS versions 1.0 and 1.0.2, which are commonly found in lower and end Atari ST models. There are two main methods for copying applications to the Gen Drive folder. The first method involves copying files on your PC, Mac, or Linux computer and then plugging the micro SD card into the sidecard. The second method is to copy applications directly from other floppy disks or hard disk drives. In this segment, I will demonstrate how to transfer content from another hard disk drive connected to your Atari ST computer. The Gen Drive is flexible enough to coexist with other hard disk drivers, provided they don't overlap in their drive unit naming. Since other drivers create drive units for each mounted partition, it's crucial to select the drive letter for the Gen Drive that is not currently in use by other drivers. In our setup, I have chosen the K drive letter. Let's reboot now. Now I will boot my computer from the gem drive set as the K unit and my ACSI2 STM hard disk drive will boot from drives C, D and E. The C uh, drive has been detected by default because it's already configured for that. But uh, we want to install our disk drive in the K gem uh, drive unit. Okay, here we have. So we have now both hard disk units uh, working concurrently, and we are going to copy. Uh, we're going to copy something from uh, from the uh, ACSA to STM drive. For example, we're going to copy a demo. We're going to copy the bad apple demo. The bad apple demo is excellent for testing the capabilities of a hard disk drive unit because it was specifically developed for hard disk drives with a minimum read transfer throughput of 300 kilobytes per second. This might sound modest by today's standards, but considering the small file size typical of computers from the 80s, it's more than enough. The gen drive isn't as fast at writing as it is at reading, so I have edited the video to bypass the copying time to save time. How does this demo work? Well, it implements a streaming process in the background that continuously reads from the drive, processing both music and images uh, simultaneously. The drive must be fast enough to maintain a sense of continuity for the viewer. This is the main reason I use this demo for testing. Enough, let's move on. The gem interface is not the best method for transferring multiple files and folders from one drive unit to another. Instead, I will use a very popular tool from the old days called Cobalt to move, or Cobalt, I don't know, to move data from the ACSI2 STM drive to the gen drive. 
allowing us to copy several folders uh, more efficiently. Okay, so we have now both uh, drives units created and before copying I'm going to delete the bad apple demo that I have used before. So I'm, I'm going to drag it directly to the trash. Okay, we are done. Let's start with Cobalt or Cobalt. I don't know how to say it. I'm going to copy files from the E hard drive unit on the left to the K hard drive unit on the right. Specifically, I will transfer several games from one of the folders in the E drive to the test folder in my K unit. Okay. Uh, okay, three games would be enough. Okay, this time I'm not going to edit uh, the video, so what you see is this is the writing speed, the real writing speed of the gen drive. I'm copying with the default uh, configuration parameters of Cobalt. Or Cobalt, I don't know how to say it, please. Somebody can help me, tell me how I, can, I should pronounce it. Uh, okay, uh, we are done. One of the main reasons to revive our beloved Atari ST is to play the games we enjoy during our youth. Peter Patnick, I think it's pronounced uh, Peter Patnick, has done an incredible job adapting thousands of games for hard disk use. Most of the games tested with AGA or AGI are supported, but other adaptations won't work with GenDrive. So make sure to check if the game supports AGA or AGI first. If it does, it will likely work with the GenDrive. I have disconnected my ACSI to STM unit, so I will change my GenDrive from drive K to drive C before testing the games. Some of them will work on any drive other than the C drive. Let's reset the computer again. Let's wait for the gen drive driver to load. And here we are. That was fast. So we are now going to look for the test three folder where we copy the games from the other drive unit. And let's start 1943. Yep, here we go. This one is working. Let's reset the computer and let's try something different now. As I explained earlier, I use the bad apple demo to test the speed of the gen drive. If it can load bad apple, that's a good indication of its performance. However, to really compare it to other hard disk drivers, I should have conducted a test using a standard benchmarking tool. And that's what I did. To test the performance, I'm using the Atari ST hard disk performance tester developed by Peter Patnick. Apologies again if I'm not pronouncing the name correctly. So let's test as a logical drive because this is what a gen drive is. And let's run the quick test. The other test uh, does not work or I couldn't make it work. Okay, here we have the results. As you can see, uh, the performance of uh, the reading performance is uh, really good but the writing performance is not so good. So I think this deserves a little of explanation. I must note that in the version 0016 of the firmware, the code is not yet optimized for performance. Even without optimization, the reading performance of the gem drive can be compared to Satan disks, for example. The performance of the ACSI to STM 
is about twice the speed, the speed of the gem drive. Uh, however, considering there is still room for improvement in the gen drive, I believe it will be soon on par with, and possibly even surprise, uh, this model. Regarding the writing performance, uh, this is more challenging. Unfortunately, uh, improving the writing performance will require more study time uh, due to the nature of the communication protocol between the Atari ST and the sidecard because the cartridge port, as you know, it's a reading device. So writing to the cartridge port, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. And that's all, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. Now it's time to clean and delete all the folders and files that I have copied during this demo. And I hope you will enjoy this gen drive uh, firmware as much as I did when I developed it. So thank you very much. And bye bye.